You know, I think it's important that we be rooted and grounded in the truth of God's word. We have to, uh, we need to understand what the, what the signs of the spirit were, were for, you know, God, you know, God established Moses with signs to the people to show that he was with him. And, you know, likewise, you know, Jesus, the signs and the wonders that, that he performed were to establish who he, that he was, who he said he was. And, uh, you see, whenever he comes out of, uh, the wilderness being tempted by the devil after fasting and praying for 40 days and 40 nights, not eating food, not drinking water, <clears throat> being tempted with the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh and the pride of life. You know, if you be the son of God, you know, make these stones to be bread, you know, and, uh, uh, if you be the son of God, cast yourself down from this pinnacle or this high spot, you know, for the Lord is, it is written, the Lord, his, the Lord shall give his angels charge over you to bear you up unless you dash your foot against a stone. You know, Satan is always uh, twisting the word of God and uh, trying to get a person lifted up in either the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the, and the pride of life, you know, so that is, that is something that we need to discern, uh, early on in our, our walk with, with God and Christ, you know, and, uh, you know, when Jesus came out of the wilderness in Full of the Holy Spirit after the angels, after being tempted, it says the angels came and ministered to him and strengthened him. You know, uh, we need to understand that uh, Jesus came as a man. He, he came as he's constantly calling himself the son of man. And the reason for that is he came as the second Adam. Uh, Paul describes him as this in uh, his first letter to the assembly at Corinth in chapter 15, uh, verse 45, saying that the last man, Adam, was made a life-giving spirit, whereas the first man, Adam, made, being made a life, uh, living soul, he he sold us all under sin, as he describes in Romans 7, 14, saying that the law is spiritual, but we're carnal or fleshly sold under sin, you know, whereas Jesus, you know, having become that life-giving spirit, redeemed us back out from underneath sin and death and gave us life and righteousness in place of it, as he said in Romans uh, 8.10, that if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but your spirit is alive because of righteousness. You know, so we see that baptism is how we enter into that. And uh, uh, enter into that life, because as he said in 1 Corinthians 15, 36, the body we sow is not given life unless it dies, you know, so it's important to see this aspect of entering into the faith that Paul says in uh, uh, 2 Corinthians 13, 5, you know, examine yourselves whether you be in the faith. Well, the, that faith is, is that I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but it's Christ who lives in me. We need to, you know, in in the Gospel of Mark, he's, uh, Jesus says clearly that, you know, those who who those who believe in chapter fifteen, uh, verses fifteen and sixteen, he says, go in all the world, you know, preaching the the good news of this you know, the gospel to every creature. And he who believes and is baptized shall be saved, you know, and he who believes not shall be damned. You know, so, we, and, and those that believe 
he says, these signs shall follow those that believe. He didn't say maybe, possibly. No, he says, these signs shall follow those that believe. You know, in my in my name, they shall cast out unclean spirits. In my name, they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. You know, if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not harm them. You know, and, and that one right there, you know, people that uh, do all these crazy things to to prove that they're, you know, Christians or whatever. That's that's like Jesus being tempted with casting himself off of the pinnacle, you know, don't get caught up in the pride of life, you know. You know, uh, it's like it's like Paul said, you know, we we're not those that, you know, do what's right to appear righteous, but we're born of the truth and can do nothing against the truth. You know, this mentality when we get you get you get to lift it up in the pride of life trying to prove something, you know, uh, Jesus told those Jews you know, after all the signs that he was giving, raising the dead, you know, person that was born blind, giving sight to them, which was never heard of among them before, you know. Uh, you know, Moses, whenever he, when he went into Pharaoh to tell him to let his people go, you know, all the signs that he done, his magicians done also. You know, so, you know, causing his hand to, putting his hand in his bosom and pulling it back out and it being, you know, white and leprous as snow and, and putting it back into his bosom and pulling it back out and being normal, you know, uh, casting a staff down and, and uh, it becoming a snake and grabbing it by the tail and it becoming a staff again his magicians were able to do all these same things and then the plagues started coming you know we got a and jesus jesus was established by signs when when john the baptist after jesus came out of the wilderness and started uh, saying repent for the kingdom of god is at hand or as near as here he says for the lord has anointed me to bind the brokenhearted, to set the captives free, you know, to give sight to the blind and to preach the good news of the gospel to the poor. You know, uh, we've got to see that God was establishing Jesus with signs and wonders just as he did Moses. But people that, you know, that harden their hearts towards the truth you know as many of the jews did in jesus day you know even john the baptist after he was thrown into prison after jesus uh began to preach because he said i must decrease and he must increase as he as the testimony is given in the gospel of john you know uh, he sent john sent disciples saying are you are you the one or should we look for another, you know, entering into temptation, you know, uh, which we all shall. And Jesus said, go and tell John what you see and what you hear, you know, uh, the lame walk. You know, the deaf hear, the, the blind are given sight, you know, and those that are oppressed of the devil are, are you know, liberated. And the gospel is preached to the poor, you know. Uh, You know, every time that God has used me to minister to someone, Satan immediately has come and attacked my mind. You know, 
And he will always attack your mind to get you lifted up in the pride of life, lust of the flesh, or the lust of the eyes. You know, and this is a constant. It, as Paul described in uh, Galatians 5, he says, you know, the, the spirit lusts against the flesh and the flesh against the spirit. And the two are contrary to one another so that you cannot do the things that you would. You know, it is, it is, a, it is a constant battle. But in all the, in the faith of Christ, you know, can we walk in the victory that he's given us over sin that is in the flesh through the faith that we entered into when we were baptized into Jesus Christ and into his death and were circumcised with the circumcision of Christ. We clothed ourselves with Christ, as he said in Galatians 3.27. You know, so signs are necessary. And, and Paul describes that in uh, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 14, where he says, that tongues are for a sign not for the believer but for the unbeliever and you know the conclusion of of his letter and talking he says you know those that speak in a tongue let them do it by two and the most by three and let one interpret you know he says at the end he says Despise not prophesying and don't forbid to speak in tongues. These gifts, these gifts are to edify us and to build us up in the Lord. And I believe it is this very thing that the writer of Hebrews was talking about in uh, chapter 5, verse 14, when he says, But solid food belongs to those who are of full age, who by reason of use have their senses the spiritual senses of their mind exercised or trained to discern between good and evil you know um, when i was after i was uh, baptized in the name of jesus and filled with the holy spirit i didn't immediately uh, speak in other tongues but later weeks later I'm, I'm i'm ministering to a man i went and got the man who had been leading me in salvation and he brought another brother and we went and prayed for this man and as i was laying hands on him and praying for him I felt in my gut knotting up and it deliberately slowly rising inside me so that it couldn't be uh, misconstrued as a, a goose bump, you know, as, oh, you just, you know, this is, this was deliberately tightening and it, went, it was rising up inside me and tightening. And I could feel it just slowly going up and then through my arms. And as it got down into my arms, closer to my hands, it started turning into electricity, a feeling like you would feel of electricity just. And it, as it started flowing out of my hands onto this man that I was laying hands on, uh, you know, it was as he said in acts 1 8 you should you know when he told his disciples dare tarry here in jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high but you shall be my witnesses both here in jerusalem and judea and and to the ends of the world you know that that power is given to every believer you know, and uh, you know, signs signs establish a witness. We're the Paul says we're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. You know that seal is is um, 
like he describes in Colossians uh, 3 3, for you are dead and your life is hidden with Christ in God. You know, we are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. And it is in another place he, he says that the Holy Spirit is, is the earnest or down payment of the per purchased possession. And for God purchased us back from death with the life and the body of his son Jesus. As he said in Colossians chapter 1, uh, 21 through 23, he says, You who were once alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, has God reconciled to himself through the body of his flesh through death? You know, so the the signs are to establish us. You know, uh, Peter um, in uh, in Luke chapter two, verses thirty one and thirty two, Jesus Jesus told Peter, He says, Simon, Simon, Satan has desired you to sift you as wheat. But I have prayed that your faith fail not. And when you are converted or return again, uh, he said, strengthen your brethren. And, you know, we, we see in, uh, uh, let's see, Matthew uh, 26, you know, verse 34 and 75 you know uh jesus telling peter again you know be, before the cock crow you should deny me three times and that their second witness to that is in luke uh chapter 22 verse 61 you know where you know Peter was determined to lay his life down, but Jesus was telling him, look, you're going to, you're going to deny me. And we got to see that Satan, you know, he was, Peter was put to the test. The apostles, all, the, all 11 disciples that walked with Jesus throughout his ministry, you know, and as Jesus said, they 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 remained with him through his uh, temptations, his trials. You know, because Jesus himself was, was tempted, as the writer of Hebrews says, that Jesus, even though he were a son, yet learned he obedience through the things which he suffered. You know, uh, we got to see that that. There's a need for signs, you know, and, and, uh, you know, if, uh, if, if our, if our life isn't being tried, maybe it's because Satan already has control of you. I mean, because, uh, Paul was clear, anyone, anyone that will live godly in this world shall suffer persecution. You know, it wasn't just uh, uh, isolated to their time. You know, I honestly think that we are in the falling, we've, we've been in the falling away, you know. Uh, people come to think of God as a trinity and God as one. Deuteronomy 6, 4, you know, here, O Israel, you know, Adonai, your Jehovah is one Adonai, or the Lord your God is one Lord. You know, there is, there is not a trinity. You know, people, people have made it into that because they don't, in the natural, they're trying to understand something spiritual. Uh, Jesus, Paul said that 
you know, Jesus emptied himself and became a man. In fact, Paul describes it as a bondservant. You know, he was he was born born into poverty. He wasn't born into a family that was was rich. You know, uh, when he was born, there was no room in the inn. When when Mary, when Joseph and Mary uh, went to pay their tithes, was about the time that Jesus was uh, ready to. He Mary was ready to give birth. And they found no room in the inn where they went to go and pay their 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 uh, taxes. And uh, we have to see we have to see the importance of signs and and their place. And if you have believed, if you have been planted in the likeness of His death baptized into Jesus Christ you know as and I've said this before but John uh, 543 Jesus said I am coming my father's name if another shall come in his own name him shall you receive how is it that you receive honor which comes from one another and not the honor which comes from God and then again in uh, John 14:26, he says the Father will send another Comforter in my name, who is the Holy Spirit. So, there is no other name. And, and Peter was clear, he says in Acts 4.12, For there is no other name given under heaven whereby we must be saved. And, uh, Paul says at the at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that he is Lord to the glory of God the Father. There is no other name, you know. It is it is Jesus who has been risen above all dominion, all power, all authority, and we've been raised together with him there. You know, we walk by faith, not by sight. You know, and as, and as uh, Paul in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, he says, you know, for the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God for they are foolishness to him. You know, for they are spirit, spiritually discerned. You know, that's, he says, so they can't receive them because they're spiritually discerned. They, they, that's why Jesus said, unless you be converted and become as this little child, he shall, you shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Because you, you're not humble enough in mind unless you, become, unless you come as a little child to God. You know, and God establishes his word, you know, in the mouth of two or three witnesses. And you know, in uh, it was either first or second chronicles, like uh, 14, 15, 16, uh, David, King David is uh, bringing the, wanting to bring the Ark of the Covenant back into a temporary tabernacle that he'd prepared for it because it had been taken into the captivity of the Philistines. Well, When he spoke it to the people, they all, with one accord, they saw it was a good thing. But initially, the first time when when uh, David tried it, he did not do it according to the word of God. For the Levites were commanded by the Lord to bear the ark. No one else was to touch it. It was holy. It was sacred. It was not common. And... You see that uh, a certain man, uh, Uzza, uh, I'm not sure if I'm even pronouncing it right, but when when they set 
when they set the ark on the cart and the oxen were pulling it and one of the oxen stumbled and the man had put his hand out to steady the ark to keep it from falling and God struck him dead and and it says David was wroth but then afterward he repented because he realized that you know he did not do it according to the way that God had commanded you know and afterward he he commanded that the Levites take the week of sanctification time to purify themselves and ready themselves to bear the ark of the covenant and bring it into its place he had prepared for it you know so just because the multitude is saying something is, doesn't mean anything You know, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, we're talking about the Word of God. And uh, if, if what the multitude is saying is contrary to the Word of God and what is written, then, you know, you, you're, you're going about it the wrong way. We have to... Uh, We have to realize that, you know, the subtleties of Satan to blind us from the truth, to get us to take a different path, to get us off of the path that Jesus established he's our forerunner and the apostles and the prophets all teach us this you know if uh, you know in in John 6 63 Jesus said the flesh profits nothing is the spirit that gives life the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. You know, God's God's breathed word is spirit. And what we need to realize is that the letter kills. The letter kills the spirit gives life, as he said in Second Corinthians three six. You know. It's easy to take a verse out of scripture and twist it. The whole time that Satan tempted Jesus when he was in the wilderness after fasting and not eating or drinking for 40 days and 40 nights, he came to him with the word of God and tempted him. When he tempted Eve, he used the word of God. He told, first thing he does is bring it into question. You know, as sure has God surely said, you shall not eat from any of the trees. I mean, so there, there you have it. He's, he's entered into the argument with the word of God. Has he, truth, has he surely said you cannot eat of any of the trees? And he was like, oh, no, not, not every tree, but just this tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You know, and he said, neither shall we touch, we should not eat from it, neither touch it, lest we die. Or as the Hebrew says, dying, you shall surely die. And uh, Satan says, you shall not surely die. For God knows in the day that you eat of it, that you shall be as God knowing good and evil. Well, the lie was that they would not die. You know, 
they did become as God to know good and evil. Even God himself afterward in the same chapter said so. You know, the deception is, is that, oh, you shall not surely die. And that, that is the same deception now. You shall not surely die. You know, it's okay. But Paul in Romans 8, 13 says, if you live after the flesh, you will die. But if you through the Holy Spirit put to death the deeds of the body, you shall live. I mean, it's just, it's cut and dry. I mean, and in Romans 8, 10, you know, if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. We enter that faith through baptism in Jesus' name, planting ourselves into the likeness of his death because we believe that God raised him from the dead and we, we followed him. He's our forerunner. He prepared the way. You know, Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist. You know, when uh, scripture says that when the Pharisees heard that Jesus baptized more people than John the Baptist, though the scripture says, though he baptized only his disciples, he says that the Pharisees came to him asking him questions. So we have to we have to see that we enter into the life of Christ through death. As he said in First Corinthians fifteen thirty six, unless the body you sow is dies, it is not given life. And we enter into that through the faith of Jesus Christ in baptism. And if we are born again, signs will follow. You know, signs will signs will establish us. You know, you see it on the day of Pentecost. Uh, you see it uh, in in Acts chapter 10 and 11 when Peter went to the house of Cornelius. And he began to give testimony of what he eyewitnessed when he walked with Jesus and how that he was crucified and then showed himself to uh, certain people predetermined after his resurrection. And no doubt they believed because as Peter spoke, the Holy Spirit fell upon them and they, they prophesied and they spoke in tongues. And Peter went with witnesses because every, by the Jewish law, every, every word was established in the mouth of two or three witnesses. And he said unto them that came with him, he says, can any forbid water to these who received the Holy Spirit, the same as we in the beginning? You know, so we have to, we have to see, because a lot of people will use that Oh, you don't have to be baptized. They, they, but they were baptized. But this, they received the Spirit first as a sign to the unbelieving, as Paul said in in First Corinthians fourteen. Tongues are for a sign, not for the believer, but for the unbeliever. That was a sign for the unbelieving Jews that God had accepted the Gentiles. You know, even as the prophets, you know, had. Uh, prophesied you know so we need to see that God was establishing his acceptance of the Gentiles through the sign of them speaking in tongues and prophesying having received the Holy Spirit but Peter commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus you know but he asked those that were with him he says you know, do you see any reason to forbid water for these that receive the Spirit the same as we? You know, so we need to, we need to, I mean, otherwise, if we don't, I mean, just, just letting Satan come in with his subtlety. Because as he said in Romans 8.10, you know, unless 
unless the body is dead because of sin Christ does not dwell in you so we have to we have to see that we enter into this faith through baptism into Jesus Christ you know as he said in Romans 6 3 as many as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death you know Satan has deceived people to get them off of baptizing in the name of Jesus. And there's only one name given under heaven. How do you, how are you baptized into Jesus Christ without being baptized in his name? You know, and the, the name of the father is Jesus. And the name of the Holy Spirit is Jesus. The name of the son is Jesus. You know, as I pointed out in John chapter 5, verse 43, and John 14, 26, you know, Jesus came in the Father's name, and the Father would spend the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. You know, so we, we can't allow Satan to, with his subtleties, you know, And when you start arguing that with the people that are that are saying, no, you do it this way, and they're, and they're like, well, what does it matter? <laughs> and, you know, I mean, that's, that's the deception, you know. So we have, we have to, we're contending for the faith once and for all delivered uh, to us by first of all Jesus to his disciples and then his disciples to the rest of the world you know the apostles and you know apostle just means one cent you know so Jesus said as the father has sent me so I send you you know so if you're going to go with the message make sure that God sent you you know, because if God didn't send you, if you don't have the, this message of the gospel and you're preaching another gospel, you know, Paul said, let that person be accursed at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, anathema, you know. So if we're going to preach a gospel, make sure that you're preaching the gospel you know don't 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 get caught up into the deception of it don't matter because you don't it does matter because we live by faith and that faith that we live by comes by hearing and that hearing that we get that faith comes from the word of god so uh, our walk is a walk of faith and that faith comes from the word of God it doesn't come from the word of man it doesn't come from Satan's twisting of God's word you know so Examine yourself, whether you be in the faith, as he said in 2 Corinthians 13, 5. Examine yourself, whether you be in the faith. You know, know you not your own self. You know, he said that how that Christ is in you, except you be reprobate. You know, reprobate mind. Uh, being alienated from the life of God through evil works, you know. Or baptized into Jesus Christ, as Peter says, you know. Or it's not the it's not so much the the washing away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a clear conscience towards God. You know, we have to keep that conscience clear. As he said in Titus 1.15, to the pure, all things are pure. But to the defiled and the unbelieving, nothing is pure. You know, keep, 
can't please God with a defiled conscience. You know, uh, as as the writer of Hebrews says in nine chapter nine verse thirteen and fourteen, you know, comparing the the sacrifice of of bulls and goats with the the body of Jesus and His blood, he says, worth the blood of bulls and goats and the sprinkling of the ashes of a heifer, you know, sanctified to the purification of the flesh. He says, how much more shall the blood of the Son of God, Jesus, who offered himself without spot of the flesh through the Holy Spirit, purge your minds from evil works to serving the living God? You know, in chapter 10, he says, for, you know, those Old Testament sacrifices were never able to make the partakers or the comers thereunto of those sacrifices perfect in regards to conscience. He says, else would there not have ceased to offer the sacrifices, but there's a remembrance of sin every year. And those same sacrifices made year after year. He says, but this man, talking about Jesus, offered his body one time for the sacrifice of sin. You know, and has henceforth sat down at the right hand of God, anticipating, waiting till uh, his enemies be made his footstool. You know, he says, now where sacrifice of these is made, he says, there remains no more sacrifice for sin. You know, for if we willfully sin after having come to full knowledge or the full discernment of the truth, there remains no more sacrifice for sin. If we sin willfully after having come to the knowledge of the truth. You know, Paul said that no flesh should be justified by the works of the law, for by the law was the full knowledge or full discernment of sin. As he describes in chapter 7 of Romans, he says, For I had not known sin except by the commandment. You know, so that, and he describes this in Galatians chapter 3, saying, What served the law then? The law was added because of transgressions. You know, to uh, be our schoolmaster, our governor, our tutor, our caretaker, you know, or, you know, the one responsible for our care and discipline until the faith of the promised seed that was promised to Abraham, talking about in Isaac, shall your, shall your seed be called, talking about Christ, seed not as in many, but one, Christ. He says, uh, so that once faith has come, we're no longer under the schoolmaster, because we know that the law is sin strength, as it says in 1 Corinthians fifteen fifty six, the sting of death is sin, still is, and the strength of the sin is the law, and it still is. He says. In Romans 3.31, it says, do we void the law through faith? God forbid, or certainly not. We establish it. Yea, we establish it. How do we do that? He says in Romans 8.4, he says, for the righteous requirements of the law are carried out by those who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. That's why he says in Romans chapter 8, verse 1, that there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. And Satan being busy trying to corrupt God's word at the core has got a lot of modern translations omitting that. I mean, and that is like, it's, it's uh, vital to the discernment of the truth that Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil and that he came to take away our sin and in him is no sin. You know, and as John says, you know, they get hung up on this John 1.8. If anyone says they have not, have no sin, 
you know, they deceive themselves. The That's why in baptism, we are circumcised with the circumcision of Christ, you know, in the putting off of the body of sin. You know, in circumcision is a one-time act. We clothe ourselves with Christ and we've been, our, our old man, the, the body of sin has been circumcised, cut away by the putting on of Christ in baptism. You know, it is, man, it is so... We have to see the truth. But Paul said to Timothy, 2 Timothy 3, 7, some are ever learning and never able to come to this knowledge or full discernment of the truth that's in Jesus. But Jesus himself in chapter 8, uh, verses 31 through 36, said, if you are truly my disciples, you will remain in my word. And if you remain in my word, talking about his doctrine, his teachings, his disciplines, uh, he said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. You know, the Jews then thought that he was talking about uh, slavery to man, but Jesus was talking about the liberation of the spirit from the flesh. As he said in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, we thus reason that if one died for all, then we're all dead. You know, that's why he says in Romans 8, 10, if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is alive because of righteousness. Our spirit has been given life because of his righteousness. You know, that's why that's why it's by grace and not by the works of the law that we're made righteous. That's why Paul says that if righteousness came by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. You know, but Satan has twisted that you know, into, you know, let us, let us, uh, let us do evil that good may come, as the Jews were accusing Paul of saying, he was like, no, this is not what I'm saying, because Paul was saying, you know, if you read in the last chapter of Acts, uh, when Paul was talking to some of the Jews then that would hear him, you know, that his message was, you know, to repent. And and likewise, Jesus, you know, uh, said, you know, go with this message and, and teach repentance, you know, and have a change of mind. That's what the Greek word repentance means. It's translated repentance means to have to have a change of mind to come in agreement with God, because as he says in uh, uh, Romans uh, chapter 8, when he says, for the, the, the carnal mind is, as he said in verse 5, the ones who are after the flesh set the affections of their mind on the things of the flesh. That's the carnal mind. That's the one who has their, the affections of their mind set on the things of the flesh. For the for the carnal or fleshly mind is enmity or hostile, as the Greek actually means, towards God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed it can it be why its affections are set on the flesh. That's the whole point of verse uh, 5 and 6, where he says, those that are after the flesh set the affections of their mind on the things of the flesh. Those that are after the spirit set the affections of their mind on the things of the spirit. So in verse 8, he says, so then those that are in the flesh cannot please God. Unless you're born again of water and the spirit, you cannot please God. And nor even after you're born again, can you please God if you continue to set the affections of your mind on the things of the flesh, because that is still possible. You can still set your affections on the things of the flesh after you've been born again. That's our choice now that we have been in Christ because the life that is in the spirit of Christ set us free from the law of sin and death that is in our flesh that once held our mind captive to sin that he, that he spoke of in Romans 7, 23. But the law gave it that power and as he said in verse 6 of chapter 7, he says, 
having died to what held us prisoners to sin, he said that we might serve God in newness of spirit, not the oldness of the letter. You know, so, I mean, we got to see, we got to see what he done. And, and walk in that liberty. For, for liberty did he make us free. As, as Peter said, you know, only use not your liberty as a cloak or a cover for your sin. You know, so, I mean, signs are, signs are necessary. And if you're a, if you're a believer, Jesus said, signs shall follow you. You know, Paul told the, the assembly at Corinth, he said, desire spiritual gifts, you know, but rather that you would prophecy, you know, because he who prophecies, you know, edifies the whole church. You know, for a person that speaks in tongues, you know, his spirit, his spirit is edified, but his understanding is unfruitful. He said, if you're going to, you know, pray in the spirit, pray with your understanding also. He's encouraging them to grow up in the Lord and come into maturity. It's the only thing that he's encouraging there. You know, he's not trying to encourage, you know, to stop because he says, don't despise prophesying and don't forbid to speak in tongues. You know, uh, as babes in Christ, so, you know, some someone's going to miss it, you know. But that the whole point of, of operating in the gifts of the Spirit are to teach us how to operate in the Spirit with the understanding of our mind to come into maturity so that you know, as he as he describes in chapter thirteen, he says, uh, "For we prophesy in part, and we know in part as babes in Christ." He says, "But when that is, which is the King James renders it perfect, but it's actually a full age. It's the same Greek word used in Hebrews chapter five, verse fourteen, and again in six one. You know, is." <coughs> We've got to see that these things are, as he says in verse 14, that solid food belongs to those who are of full age, who by reason of use have had their senses, talking about the spiritual senses of their mind, trained to discern between good and evil. You know, it is these gifts that, that teach us and train us, you know, and, and as, as as Jesus said, because of iniquity, you know, love shall wax cold. You know, we cannot. Jesus asked this question, shall the Son of Man find faith in the earth when he returns? You know. So many people, so-called believers, naturalize everything. You know, so if signs are not following you, then I, I do not believe that you're born again. You know, like Jesus didn't say that signs would follow some or they might follow the believer. But, you know, he said, no, he said, these signs shall follow those who believe. You know, and that is the mentality that you should be walking in as a believer. If you have been baptized in the name of Jesus, filled with his Holy Spirit, if you called on the name of the Lord after you, when you were baptized in the name of Jesus, he will, and he is faithful to his word. He will perform his word. But without faith, but without faith, faith in that you're not going to receive anything from God as James said you know the person that's doubt is like a wave of the sea tossed to and fro you know don't let this person think that they're going to receive anything from God you know people want people want to see before they believe 
you know. You know, the only way anyone is going to come to God, to Jesus, is if God draws them. You know, and I, and I really believe that the, the message of the gospel has been compromised to try to uh, entice people to come. But that's just the deception of Satan. You know, because that is not going to work. That is not going to work. It is not our job to draw them. It is our it is our job to speak the message of the gospel that it was handed down to us through his disciples, through his apostles, through his prophets. So examine yourself whether you be in the faith. You know, will the Son of Man find faith in the earth when he returns? As I promise you, I'm like, man, it's, it's coming, so. Be girded up in the loins of your mind. Be established in the truth. You know, as Jesus said, you know, don't fear him who is only able to destroy the body. He said, fear him who after death is able to destroy the soul. You know, but we're of those who believe in the saving of the soul. So, let us, uh, let us enter in at the narrow gate. For narrow, straight is the gate, and narrow is the way that leads to life. And few there be there that find it, and enter in thereat. As Jesus himself said, But broad is the way, and wide is the gate that leads to destruction. You know, Romans 8, 16 says that his spirit bears witness with our spirit that we belong to him. As John said, he who believes has the witness in himself. That's what he's talking about. You know, if, you, if you're just going on willpower and, and I'll promise you, if you, if you, if you believed that God raised him from the dead and you've confessed him, Lord, and you followed in baptism in the name of Jesus and put on Christ, as he said in Galatians 3.27, for as many of us have baptized into Jesus Christ were put on Christ or clothed themselves with Christ. That is the circumcision of Christ and putting off this body of sin once for all. You know, it is not, it's not a process. It is, it is an act that happens when, it, when you're baptized. Circumcision is, is an act, is a one-time act. It's like, we're circumcised and it's over with. It's like, we're not growing out of sin. We're growing up into him. And whatsoever is not a faith is sin. Don't put, don't get caught up in the deception of, putting yourselves back underneath the yoke of the law, you know? You walk by faith, not by sight. So, God give you understanding. Amen.